explainer. What is music therapy? We have the old adage that says, music soothes the savage beast. And that is really true. They've even found that music is good for infants. Music is good, classical music especially, is good for growing plants and even for uh, subduing and uh, causing the wild beasts to uh, mellow. Now, what is music therapy? This is by Janet Templin, postdoctoral research fellow, Music Therapy, University of Melbourne, Australia. This is on the conversation. Defining music therapy is challenging because the practice is so diverse, but the Australian Music Therapy Association, AMTA, AMTA, uses the following definition. Music therapy is a research-based practice and profession in which music is used to actively support people as they strive to improve their health, functioning, and well-being. We know that even in the healing centers of ancient Greece, they were using therapy, uh, music therapy as well. Not only music therapy, but also art, fasting, bathing, confession, and theater. One tragedy and one comedy. Now, music therapy is the intentional use of music by a university-trained professional who is registered with the AMTA. Registered music therapists draw on a, an extensive body of research and are bound by a code of ethics that informs their practice. They incorporate a range of music-making methods within a therapeutic relationship and are employed in a variety of sectors, including health, community, aged care, disability, early childhood, and private practice. Music therapy is different from music education and entertainment as it focuses on health, functioning, and well-being. And music therapists work with people of any age and ability, culture, or background. The history. The use of music in healing has had a long history, but music therapy as a profession began to develop formally in USA in the 1950s to help war veterans suffering from physical and emotional problems. The demand for a university curriculum grew as hospital musicians needed training. The American Association for Music Therapy was established in 1971 and the Australian Association soon after in 1975 by music therapy pioneers Dr. Ruth Bright and Emeritus Professor Denise Groak. As anyone who sings or plays a musical instrument will tell you, making music, especially with others, is great for the mind, body, and soul. The benefit flows whether you are an accomplished musician or an enthusiastic amateur. Music therapists draw on the benefits of music to help people of all ages and abilities attain and maintain good health and well-being. They work in a range of places, including hospitals, nursing homes, schools in the community, delivering tailor-made programs to meet specific needs. Endorphin, dopamine, and oxytocin triggers. The techniques used by music therapists can include writing songs for or with clients, free or structured movement to music activities, singing and vocal activities, improvisation, playing traditional instruments, or digital music equipment, listening to recorded music, and engaging socially in a group setting. The ability of music to change our mood seems to be related to the production of different chemicals in the brain. Endomorphins, triggered by music listening and music making, provide a kind of natural pain relief where dopamine leads to feelings of buoyancy, optimism, energy, and power. This may explain the kind of flow and peak experiences often described as being evoked by music listening and more active music participation. Impacts are even more potent for group music making because shared positive experiences also release exotocin, a brain tool for building trust. In this way, musical relationships develop encouraging nonverbal and emotional expression and building self-esteem, motivation, and confidence. Music therapy is neurohabilitating neuro-rehabilitating. Music is processed widely across the brain in connection with memories, emotions, and communication. Developments in brain scanning technology show that making music increases brain activity, creating new pathways across both hemispheres of the brain. 
This makes music therapy especially beneficial in neurorehabilitation, where the organizing function of rhythm in music can be used to rehabilitate movement and speech following a brain injury or a stroke. Music therapy and dementia. There is a strong connection between music and memory, as can be attested by the flood of emotions stimulated by hearing significant songs or the annoying adver advertising jingles that get stuck in your brain. Music therapists use this future feature of music to help people with memory difficulties access important pieces of information, in specifically composed songs. Memory for music is closely linked to emotions and both are processed deeply within the, the brain. Memory for song lyrics often remain long after other memory and verbal ability have deteriorated from people with dementia. Music therapy often awakens something within people in late stage dementia and can stimulate widows, windows of lucidity, providing family members with glimpses of the person they love. Music therapy in children's hospitals. Music therapy is frequently used in children's hospitals for pain and anxiety management during procedures and to engage children in a normalizing activity that is unrelated to them being unwell. This provides an opportunity for choice and control in an environment where they have little control over everything else. In special education, music therapists work with children with intellectual and or physical disabilities to help them meet developmental and educational goals. This may include music, using music to increase opportunities for cognitive and sensory stimulation and to help develop motor skills, orientation, and mobility. Music therapy provides an outlet for the children's emotional expression, increasing awareness of the immediate environment in other people, and enhances self-confidence through active music making. It can also help improve a child's social skills and communication. Teenagers and music. Young people spend a significant amount of time engaging with music, and vulnerable teenagers spread even more so more music. Uh, teenagers spread, spend even more so. Music therapists in adolescent mental health use this strong connection with th that teens have with music as a source of grappling with their emerging mental health problems. The Australian, Australian Research Council has recently funded a research project headed by Associate Professor Katrina McFernan to investigate the music uses of young people with and without mental ill health with a view to early identification and early intervention in adolescence. This is on The Conversation by Janet Tamplin, postdoctoral fellow, Music Therapy, University of Melbourne, and Creative Commons. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.